Hi, I'm Eric. And this is Calvin. And this is the New in Blue Show, Episode 3. You know Calvin Jones from uh, our Repair Help videos, Tech Tuesdays. He's our Director of Education. So we're going to talk about uh, his latest project. And we're also going to talk about new tools. And do we have stuff? We have stuff. So we're going to launch right into new product. So let's talk about the BBB4. So this has been a huge project for Calvin. Um, we started in 2005 with the BBB1. BBB is the big blue book of bicycle repair. It's a printed book, also available digitally this time mm -hmm. on a few different platforms. But tell us a little bit about the Blue Book and tell us what's different than the right. BBB3. This is truly the project that never ends because we are always listening to people at Sea Otter. What do they want to know? What's not explained correctly? So we take that and we expand things and add things. So we've expanded brakes more and in deeper brakes. We've gone deeper uh, into bottom brackets. There's never enough new bottom bracket standards. So we explain We them love new standards. We do love new standards. <laughs> And then uh, a whole new chapter, wheel building, not just lacing, but taking the hub, throwing the spokes in, right. pulling so it up. wheel straightening. That's right. Now wheel building. So, right. and completely revised in, in every, every chapter. The book keeps getting bigger because we keep putting more in it, but that is available now. Uh, there is a companion to that, um, and this is called the BBB for TG, which stands for Teacher's Guide. And the reason it's a Teacher's Guide is we offer a program called Park Tool School. Now, if you're a home mechanic, you can go to uh, a lot of different locations, usually a bike shop, a community center, things like that, and they will conduct mostly hands-on clinics um, called Park Tool School. Mm -hmm. This is the Teacher's Guide, so tell us what's in here uh, right. in addition to the So bonus. the same technical information is in both. What this has is the curriculum and how to teach it, which is different than actually doing it. So setting up a class, how to think about it, how to, to schedule things and relate to people again as a teacher. Right. So that's all, all, all in here. So for the, for the home mechanic and the students, this one, and for the shops and programs that are teaching, this one. Right, and you can find a listing of those that do the Park Tool School on our website. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk about some tools. Um, we make a, a number of common hand tools. Um, we make a few different cutters. We make a cable cutter, which is very specific, a specialty tool. Um, we make a side cutters, but now we have two new um, tools. This is a, basically a utility pliers. Mm -hmm. It's called the LP7. The, you can use that on a wide variety of tasks. One of my favorites is it's a nice, nice crimper. It really gets in there with those aggressive teeth. Nice crimper. Right, and this is a really nice pliers. I really like how that mm -hmm. turned out. Radius jaws, serrations here, and a cutter. The second uh, new plier type tool is the ZP5. So that looks like a little side cutter, Calvin. What mm -hmm. is different from th between this and our uh, side cutters. Well, from the big papa here, this is always how they're made. It's gonna be an indentation here. It's never gonna get down to that zip tie and cut. It's gonna always leave a sharp edge. Right. But what's nice here is it cuts flush because it's ground flat, and that's a big difference. So a flush cut. Smooth, cutter. flush cut, smooth. Right. That's what's nice. And, the, and the, the most common use would be for zip ties, but there are a no, uh, number of other things that can be used on. All right, let's talk about one of your favorite new tools. Holding wheels, I love to hold the wheels, but now there's a tool for this it. This is the WH1 wheel holder. Uh, basically a way to hold wheels because wheels are cumbersome, they're gangly. They, you do a, a, a huge variety of tasks mm -hmm. with a wheel, with tires, cassettes, etc. You can choose from three different positions, horizontal, vertical, at an angle. Um, this mounts up to a bench, or you can put it in a vise. You can bolt it right down to your bench. You can clamp it on your bench if you don't want to leave it there. So what would be some typical 
common tasks that well, we would with use? The story? tubeless world getting bigger and bigger. We are seeing uh, sealants all over the place. Uh, we can put tapes, tapes on, uh, cassette, uh, changing cassette. We can change uh, rotor lock rings and quick release or through axle. Surprisingly fun. Surprisingly fun. <laughs> all right. So then we're going to transition into a, a new chain checker. We make uh, already two chain checkers. And uh, one of them is a CC2, and then we make a CC3.2. This is a CC4. So it's a little bit longer and immediately recognizable that it's got three legs on it instead mm -hmm. of the two of the CC3.2. Tell us why we need this tool and, and how it works. Well, the, the new chain, the new the axis chain from SRAM is uh, a larger roller. That's the, Kind of subtle, you don't see that much, but the, the, uh, the roller itself is a bigger diameter, meaning you can't be changing chains around if you have that system. So the old tools uh, did not fit that. What's unique about this is it's gonna measure from the backside of, of uh, this roller to the backside of this roller as a reference, backside to backside. The CC 3.2 and CC 2 measure from inside to an outside, so uh, this eliminates the roller diameter from the measurement. So, so there's one more step with this process. One, one Basically, more step. you have to put some stress on That's onto right. the chain. Yeah. So it doesn't drop in at all. We're good to go. There is a, uh, a 0.5 of a percent wear, then a 0.75. So by the time it hits the 75, you're looking to get a new chain to keep that. Right, that, and it depends on your set. chain manufacturer. They, always check you that. Can, you can find that information from your chain That's manufacturer. Right. Um, one more new product is the TSB 4.2. That's a mouthful. But the TSB 4.2 is a tilting base and uh, a way to hold a truing stand. This one fits the new TS 4.2. This one is wider. Um, to fit the wider stand. So if you've got a TS 4.2 or are considering getting one, this is the only base that will fit. Nice big footprint, it can stand alone and it can be bolted down. Right, as well. Yeah, as, as you can see, we can put spoke wrenches in here and parts of uh, spoke nipples, mm -hmm. etc. Coffee cup, what right. have you. Nice part about it is that it tilts. So if you're at different working heights, it will give you the, the proper uh, line of sight. Mm -hmm. So TSB 4.2. Uh, the other new thing I want to talk about are toolkits. So we make six different toolkits. And they start with the SK3, which is a, a small basic kit, a good way to get you started. And that's really our belief with toolkits. It's pretty hard to make a toolkit that works for everybody on their bikes or on every bike. You really you really can't do it uh, when, you're, when you're talking about fitting everything in a toolbox. So the SK3, um, that stays the same, but now we made new versions of the AK, so it's the AK4, which is a good set, good basic set of professional tools. We move up to the PK4, which is an even bigger set of professional tools, and we're trying to be as versatile uh, uh, as we can with those um, these are all kits that you can add to. Add to the palette as you go. Right, for your every, bike. every bike is different. Every mm -hmm. manufacturer requires different tools for the mm -hmm. components. Moving on from the PK, we have the EK3, which is our ev uh, event and race kit. Mm -hmm. And that comes in the BX 2.2 big blue box. Right. And that one um, is, is basically tools that you could or would use at an event mm -hmm. or a race. At a race, you're not gonna know what's gonna come, come to your stand, you're at a charity event, could be all sorts of things. EK, an excellent base for that. The two bigger kits, MK moves to the MK297 now. So that's 297 of our best professional tools. It's basically all of our professional tools. Truly the master kit. The master kit. So if you are starting a bike shop, that's what you get. Um, that has cutting tools, gauges, measuring equipment, frame tools, plus all of the regular common professional level hand tools that we make. It is a big kit. 
And every year it gets a little bit bigger because we add the new product to that. Um, the BMK is this year, it's a BMK 275. And that is the base master kit. So sometimes a shop will already have cutting tools or they're going to add a complete uh, another bench, but they don't need all the cutting tools, et cetera. So the base master kit is all the professional level tools without the, mm -hmm. some of the cutting tools. All right, so we've seen the new tools. And as we said, we're, we promise to bring you new tools on the New and Blue show every, every once in a while when we have a good collection of them. But now we're gonna talk about old tools. Mm -hmm. We've been making tools for 56 years and we used to make some things that we don't make anymore. So we're gonna explain how those work, mm -hmm. how they were used at the time, and really why we don't make them anymore. Right. So here we go. So now here we are in our workshop, and our workshop includes a wall of old tools. So some of these things are old versions, some of them are prototypes, some of them are things we used to make and don't make anymore. So today we're gonna to talk about frame tools. Now, there's a lot going on here, Calvin, uh -huh. because back in the day, we used to straighten a lot of frames, steel frames. As they said, steel is real. They have said that. So why don't we straighten frames today? Uh, two words, two words, Eric Hawkins. Carbon fiber, carbon fiber flexes. If it gets to the point that it stays bent, it is broken. Right. A lot more thin aluminum and then a lot more carbon fiber. Just don't do but it. Even the steel frames today, we don't really straighten. No, very because often. they're nice, they're really good steel. It's really, really thin. So the right. older frames, they use more of it. Malleable, right. it would take a man, it could take a set to give and points. There's three tools here. The first one is the FRS frame repair stand. So you used to slide the bottom bracket on there. You would bolt this into the concrete floor mm -hmm. because you're going to twist and bend and pull right. on this stand, all based off of the bottom bracket shell. Strongest part of the bike. So the FRS one, much like the WH1, it's oh, fixturing. Back to the WH1. Again. Right. So this stand not only held the frame, but you could measure, basically you're measuring the whole front triangle to make sure that within reason, everything is straight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this would slide up and down and you could check this tube, you check your, um, you, you, you check your head tube, although it's usually a little bit bigger. But uh, basically, th these three tubes, you want to make sure that everything is straight, not twisted, and so on. Well, there's another tool we have very much like this, checking different points. Right. The DAG 2.2. Right, which does on the derailleur hanger. Um, this one also, you could check the rear dropouts, but you'd have to flip the frame. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure everything is on the center line here, is basically what it comes down to. So that's the FRS 1. Now, this contraption mm -hmm. is the HTS one. Well, when, what circumstance this bike came into the shop? What would have happened here? Well, a guy was on his phone. No, that didn't happen, mm -mm. right? So somebody's riding, just riding along, and they run into the back of a car. Watch out for those parked cars. Right, so basically, the whole front wheel would be shot back the fork may bend, and we had tools for straightening forks as well, but what would happen was this head tube would cant back like that. You get a couple little bumps here mm -hmm. and a bump there. Wrinkles. Wrinkles. This was made to straighten the head tube back out. Rebend. You bent it, we'll bend it back. Right. And so this is a left-hand thread and a right-hand thread. This is a fatigue-proof shaft in here. And basically, you turn this, mm -hmm. and it will pull this out. Kind of an inexact science. No more than kind of. It was an inexact science. You could measure and do all that again. But it was a very powerful tool, and we just don't do this anymore. No. This was an SS1. Mm -hmm. And it's a SS stands for? Stay. Straightener. Right, so these are your rear stays. And basically, I don't know how exactly you'd get a bend in here, but you could run into something. You somebody could, runs somebody into you. Somebody runs into you, and these are smaller tubes. Right. 
So what's you, nice here, we have three point contact. So we're bracing here near the dropout, bracing up here near the weld. You would move this and position this accordingly where the bow is. And as you pull this and tighten, pushes against here, pulls here, pulls it back. You compare it to the other stay. Ah, uh, good enough. Good right. enough. These hooks slide in mm -hmm. or out so you could do a small area or a wide area. That's right. So, you're gonna carry a big stick. It's, it's not even gonna be walking softly because this is a nice tool, this is a tool. Look at that hook there. Yeah. Leather lined. That is for the tube here, and then we can lever here. You wouldn't use these together, but here, I'm prying that open, and then I'm gonna pry this open. Very useful, we have the, the five speeds and then these modern six speeds come along. Six speeds, Eric. Crazy. And then a little bit wider, a little bit wider. So a little spreading here and alignment. So leverage. Right. So we just had these made at a local wood shop and we would glue the leather strip in and then we dipped them in a tank of polyurethane and hung them all over the shop. It was. It was quite a process. Give us a place to stand and we'll move the earth. FBT1 frame bending tool. So those are just some of the things we used to make uh, and we don't make anymore and really for good reason. But you gotta learn from it. You gotta change with the times and right. that's what we do. All right, let's head back upstairs. And we're back. So as mentioned, Calvin uh, is our director of education and we have an entire video uh, production team and it's our job to make videos. And we're making repair help videos, product videos, a little bit of storytelling. Um, we do Tech Tuesday. We've got hundreds of videos and you can find those on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. We also do quite a bit on social media and uh, we're on four different platforms. One of the things you can do is take a photo of your shop the layout of the shop, how you get your tools arranged. Um, we've gotten tons of great uh, workshop photos on our Instagram. If you want to submit a photo of your workshop, tag us at Park Tool Blue and use the hashtag Ultimate Blue Tool Wall. So that's all we have for you today. This is the New and Blue Show, episode three. Again, we promise to come back whenever we have a collection of new tools and other things to talk about. So for now, Calvin Jones, Eric Hawkins, we'll see you again. Next time. Oh, you just had to get the last word in, <laughs> didn't you, Calvin? <laughs>